for coming uh, to the New Hampshire legislative process. <laughs> I'm going to just introduce myself, although you all know who I am. My name is Kathy Fletcher. Um, what you might not know about me is that I am a law librarian, and I have been uh, for over 20 years, all of them in New Hampshire. Um, I'm happy to take questions throughout this presentation. Uh, if you, I don't see you, shout them out. <laughs> and uh, I was saying to Harry, my glasses, I'm like trying to see like four different distances. So um, if I don't see your hand, shout them out. And uh, I'm going to try for us to have a break during this class. And if you need to get up and have a break, have a break. OK, so uh, the legislative process. We're going to start with Civics 101. There are three branches of government in New Hampshire and in the federal government, and you probably remember that they're the legislative branch, the judicial branch, and the executive branch. Um, today we're going to talk about the legislative branch, but in our system of government, uh, the Constitution has created three co-equal branches of government. Each of these branches can create laws. And uh, so we're going to focus on the legislative process, but it's important to remember that sometimes you might be listening to the radio and you might be hearing about a new law, and what they're actually talking about is a regulation, which is from the executive branch. Or, um, so for example, if you hear that it's against the law to have blue headlights in your car, that's a regulation and not a statute. Statutes are passed by the legislative branch. Mm -hmm. um, if you know from watching a million episodes of Law and Order that the police have to read you your Miranda rights, uh, Miranda was the name of a case, Miranda versus the state of Arizona. So that law that exists that you must be read your rights was created by the United States Supreme Court. So three equal branches, uh, each creates law. Today we're going to talk about the legislative branch. Is this going well with recording? Oh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> okay, me too. <laughs> Okay, so the New Hampshire legislature is a bicameral legislature, which means there are two houses, the House and Senate. They are elected every two years for a session. In New Hampshire, our legislature is called the General Court, uh, which can be confusing because yeah. you think, yeah. how could that be a court? But the General Court. So the legislative session lasts the two years between elections. The uh, a constitutional amendment in 1942 limited the size of the House to 400, but not less than 375 members. So there are 400 members of the House, and there are 24 members of the Senate. Um, there are 24 standing committees of the House, that becomes important later, and uh, there are 13 standing committees of the Senate. Each member of the House and Senate is paid $200 per year, so $400 for the whole session. This means that in New Hampshire, we have a non-professional legislature. Uh, in other states, like Massachusetts, for example, they get paid a lot more so that you can take sort of a leave from your job to be a legislature, a legislator in New Hampshire. Uh, that is not so. So the people in the House are some interesting, an interesting combination of retired people and college students and uh, people who are just interested. And people in the Senate usually have uh, some money so that they can, uh, every two years, be in a legislative session. So one of the things in your handout, you have a copy of the slides as I read them, but you also have a handout from the uh, New Hampshire League of Women's, Women Voters, which is uh, how a bill becomes law. So I thought tonight that I would go through the process, which is sort of the boring part of the presentation. It's not really, but the boring part of the presentation. And then the second part, we would talk about how to track that uh, using the internet and where the citizen action might come in. So <coughs> the process starts because someone has an idea, and the idea, and someone says, oh, there ought to be a law. So some ideas come from citizens in New Hampshire. Some ideas come from legislators themselves. Um, sometimes uh, citizens ask their representative, of which we all have about a million, uh, to, that's an exaggeration, but to create and sponsor legislation. So uh, an idea becomes a bill. And uh, a representative or a senator asks 
the Office of Legislative Services to craft a bill. The Office of Legislative Services is a non-elected office that sits in the Legislative Office building in Concord. They put the idea into statutory language if that bill is going to be enacted and encoded into the New Hampshire statutes. Um, so they make a request of the Office of Legislative Services and that's called a Legislative Services Request. That, that is important to know because that's going to be abbreviated an LSR. I'm trying to give you these. There's a lot of uh, three letter and four letter acronyms on the website so I'm trying to uh, make sure we know what they all are. So all bills need to have a sponsor. They need to have a sponsor either in the Senate or in the House. The primary sponsor of the bill determines if it is a House bill or a Senate bill. And uh, Legislative Services gives the bill a bill number. Uh, in, so to the, for the public, there's not a lot of information about LSRs available, except the title of the legislation that they want to enact. So uh, a bill requiring motorists to have automobile insurance might be what it's called. You don't get to see any of the details in an LSR. There's just a title line and a sponsor line. I'll show you this later, too. Uh, in New Hampshire, I don't know. Did you have a question? Yeah. Are you going to explain how, how would they determine whether it will be a House bill or a Senate bill? It depends on who's sponsoring it. Oh. So, um, I don't know if you've been listening to uh, the federal news, but there's a tax bill right now in the House and Senate of the Congress. And in the federal government, all kinds of bills for tax reform are in all kinds of places. Uh, in New Hampshire, that, that, that doesn't happen. A bill gets its number. It will be House Bill 401. It will go into it, it'll pass the House, and then when it goes to the other, it's still House Bill 401. Okay. Makes it much easier to figure out what's going on. Okay, so a bill is created, and then it's introduced. It's introduced, it's read into its home chamber, and it's read and sent to a committee. Remember I said there are uh, 13 committees in the Senate and some number 24. 24, good work. Boy, you guys are doing a good job. 24 in the House. So a bill is read and then it's sent to committee. Uh, oh, look, it's right on the screen. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> How clever. Okay, so each committee has, yes. Who's just the committee? Uh, I think the speaker makes the appointments to who's on what committees. That's my... No, what bill, how do they choose which bill goes to which committee? Uh, I think legislative services does that. Oh, okay. That's a good question that I am guessing at the answer to, but if you really want to know, I can look up. Wouldn't it maybe be the context of the bill, like if it has something to do with education? Yeah, right, yeah, right, right, right. Education. right. And so that legislative service would, would, would know that, that, right? And then there are some um, bills, I don't have an example of one, but there are some bills when you see them in print, they say House Bill 401-FN. And FN, uh, if that's on your bill number, means that there's a financial note that it's going to affect the finances of the state in some way. So, okay, so each committee has a chair, and it's the chair's job to schedule a hearing on each bill sent to her committee. So the, you know, first the run through of the House bill is read, it's sent to executive department and agencies, that's the committee, the chair of that committee has to schedule a hearing. This is the dry part. <laughs> okay, so the committee holds a hearing. So the committee is scheduled for a public hearing and the chair must give 72 hour notice before a hearing is held. So you can't have sort of a controversial bill and have the chair of the committee go, oh, it's afternoon at two, we're having a hearing to keep people from testifying. You have to have 72 hour notice. Uh, at the hearing, interested parties speak for and against passage of the bill. Uh, and after uh, at least one public hearing, the committee votes to make recommendations on the disposition of the bill. So what happens is 400 people in the House, 12 people on a committee, bill gets sent to the committee, committee has all the hearings, so the whole House doesn't have to, committee has all the hearings, the chair comes back and they say, okay, House Bill 400, what's the committee report? So the committee votes about how they think it should be enacted. And these are some uh, terms of art that you need to know. The committee might vote inexpedient to legislate. That 
almost always will kill a bill. If a bill is killed in committee, the committee has voted it's inexpedient to legislate. The committee might vote that it ought to pass. The committee might vote that it ought to pass with an amendment. Tristan. So how do they vote for this status? Is it they vote in their on each status? Yes. Okay. So the committee holds a hearing. They usually don't. They usually have the hearing, and then the committee goes back later and says, "Okay, how are we going to vote on this?" And they take the vote. And <coughs> sometimes, sometimes a committee of say nine people, they'll say five vote ought to pass and four vote inexpedient to legislate. That's a pretty controversial one. And it might be nine to zero. It might be so. Um, Theoretically, the people on theoretically on the House committees have some experience in the subject or have some interest in the subject of the committee, but so they vote and then they report back. Uh, so, so what I was trying to get is so oh, yeah. three possible votes here, but so the example of the nine-person committee is not like right. you're ever going to get a three-three-three vote. Right. It's always right. going to be right. You only get to vote up or down. You only get to vote up or down. Okay. And does the House or Senate see that it was four legislate, inexpedient to legislate, two ought to pass, and three, or do they just, do they, does the committee speak with one voice? No, the committee reports out exactly how it was voted. Okay. And, and how many on a committee did you say? It, it, well, it, it can be, yeah. Okay. Fewer on Senate, larger on House, because there's more of that. Is it your feeling that the public testimony in these hearings makes a difference? Yes. And how is the public notified of the hearing? We'll get there. <laughs> we will get there. That's the exciting part of this. This is sort of the boring part. So it's all good. Okay. So after the hearing, I put my glasses back on. After the hearing, uh, the bill comes back to the full chamber for a second reading. The chair announces the committee's report. Usually, the chair will say. We had a big hearing on this. A lot of people came out and spoke in favor of this. A lot of people spoke against. The committee has voted 9 to 0, ought to pass. Uh, then uh, there's usually a third reading, which I don't have yet, but the whole chamber then votes on whether to pass the bill. So the House can say yes, it, or the committee can say yes, it should pass, and the House can say nope, or the committee can say no, shouldn't pass, and the House can say yep. Usually the House. Uh, and Senate follow their committee's guidance, but not always. Particularly some, with some of the hot ones. Does it have to be? Is there a percentage vote when you get to the to the, to the chamber? It's a simple majority. Oh, okay, so that's right. Yep. And then sometimes, <coughs> uh, with really contentious ones, someone will make a motion that they uh, do it audit. You know, that you have to the voice vote. So that you have to affirmatively say what you do. Okay, so once a bill passes the first chamber, it goes on to the next chamber. In the next chamber, the bill is read, sent to a committee. You get this process now, right? Mm -hmm. Committee chair schedules a public hearing. At the hearing, people testify for and against. The committee votes, and now I've used the acronyms ITL, inexpedient to legislate, OTP, ought to pass or OTP with AM, ought to pass with an amendment. The committee reports back to the full chamber. The chamber then votes. If both the House and the Senate, or if either the House or the Senate, amends the other's bill, the chair or the um, speaker appoints a committee of conference. And that's a few people from the committee in the House and a few people from the committee in the Senate. And they try to go back and hammer out the amendments. And then once they agree upon the hammered amendments, they bring the agreed upon amendments back. And then both chambers have to vote yes. Dave. Does which chair the in the Senate or the House appoints the committee, or do they each point their half? They appoint their own people. And when it comes back out of that conference committee, yep. does it go back again to any committees or no? No, no. It comes out of the committee of conference because they've worked it out. Okay. The committee of conference says, okay, this is what we've worked out, yes or no. And back to the full. And box. back to the full. Okay. Yep. And there is no hearing with the committee of conference. They're just hammering out an event. What if they can't agree? They can't agree, then nothing gets brought back. Who gets to write the amendments? I think 
this is me talking off the top of my head. I think legislators who know what committees they're on and they know see what's coming at them and they go, ah, uh, and the legislative services office, I think, writes a vision. So, because, and that's back to we have a citizen legislature. So, most of the people in our legislature are not attorneys, most of them are, you know, so, so legislative services really gives the language of the law its language. Okay, so, Elaine. What about table? tabling? Tabling is something that can happen uh, at the vote. Uh, it can happen in a lot of places. So last year, there was a bill, uh, the gender equality bill. Uh, that bill was tabled by the committee chair. So they didn't ever even report it out because it was tabled by that was in the House. That was in the House. The Senate and went it passed the House and went to the House. And the House committee, rather than voting on it, the guy tabled the chair tabled it. The chair tabled it. So it didn't get brought back to. Uh, that means it's dead. So it's hanging out there. They could revive it. Not until the following they year. right, or they could try again. Uh, if it doesn't make it by the end of the 2018 session, then it's dead because it's still on the table at the end of the session. Are people following along. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> so once the bill is passed, most changers is sent to the governor. Uh, the governor has some options. He could sign the bill into law. Uh, he can not sign it and let it become law anyway. Can you advance a slide? Yes, I can. Thank you. Uh, he can, it, so not sign it and let it become law anyway, or he can veto it. If the governor vetoes it, the bill can go back to both the House and Senate, where then it needs two-thirds of each body to override his veto. So once something's vetoed, in New Hampshire, it's very hard to repass because you've got to get two thirds of that 400. And that's, you know, presumably if if you had two thirds of that body, the governor wouldn't be it. You know what I mean? Like, because it would be so overwhelmingly, whatever. Okay. So uh, now we're going to move from the, from the all words part to the other part. Okay. So here's an example from 2017. Here's the idea Yvette McDonald knows what she wants. She wants to braid hair. Okay. In New Hampshire, only licensed cosmetologists and barbers can braid hair. You can't braid hair for money without a license unless you're a cosmetologist. She wants the law to change to allow non-licensed hair braiders to charge money for braiding hair. Okay. So, she finds some sponsors. This is where, if you need to see, by all means, move forward. She finds some sponsors, and a, a House bill is created, House Bill 82, and it's a bill that is introduced to the House exempting hair braiding from the Board of Licensing and Cosmetology. It is sent to the, my screens are not even as big. Okay, it's sent to the Executive Departments and Agency Administrative Committee because that's the committee of the House that sort of thinks about the way administrative agencies work. She has three sponsors, and I don't know if you can see this, but she has two Republicans and a Democrat. That's really lovely to have that sort of bipartisan support, even at this level. Um, and so, uh, the, what does this bill do? This bill exempts hair braiding from regulation by the Board of Cosmetology and Burberry. So that's her idea and that's her bill. So let's move forward and we can find out what happens. So this is last year, 2017. This is, this is the wonderful website. Uh, this is the website of the state of New Hampshire, www.newhampshire.gov. That's our lovely governor, Chris Sununu, smiling over the White Mountains. <laughs> on this website, <laughs> again, actually, uh, on this website, you can see on the right hand side of the screen, thank you, I don't know right from my left, uh, there's a link, uh, legislature, the legislative branch, right? Because it's divided up judicial. All right, so when we want to find out what happens, that's our link. That link, I didn't do live screens, by the way, because I was a little concerned about the internet connection. So that link brings you to uh, the legislative court dashboard. And I'm going to make an aside here. So I said at the beginning that I've been a law librarian for 20 years. This was like the most miraculous thing <laughs> ever. When I, when I, it was like, 
you know, because we used to be like looking through house calendars and stuff. So this is just a lovely thing. Okay, so this is the general court dashboard. Remember the legislature is called the general court in New Hampshire. So, so much to look at in this one. So this is the portal to the New Hampshire state legislature uh, for both us, the public, and for the legislature. So if you're in the legislature, you're looking here too. Uh, all of uh, all of it links here. This is where you can find bills and their dockets and schedules. This is where you can uh, find the laws as they're passed. I didn't give you this term of art, but the laws as they're passed are called the session laws. The session laws are differentiated from the revised statutes in New Hampshire because the session laws uh, there's a session law volume of book uh, for every year of the legislature. So in 2017, law one could be about dog licensing, and law two could be about farm taxing, and law three could be about license plates, and law four, so they're just the laws as they're enacted and signed by the governor. The Office of Legislative Services takes those enacted laws, and if they are statute, if they affect the New Hampshire statutes, they are then codified into a set of books called the New Hampshire Revised Statutes Annotated. And the Revised Statutes Annotated are a code. So Title V of the code is about public safety. So it doesn't matter when the laws were enacted, they are they are numbered according to a code system and not just in numerical order. Okay, so you can find the session laws here. You can find House and Senate committee membership here. Um, right, I was like, as a librarian, I was absolutely thrilled when this website went up. Um, it is maintained by the New Hampshire Office of Legislative Service, who is in, which is a non-elected office that exists to support the legislature. So if we move from this screen and link to um, the legislation dashboard. Is this, yeah? Okay. If you look over on the left, if, if you look at the, uh, if you if you click on the New Hampshire State Senate, yeah, will you get the senators? No, you get the Senate. Uh, you get the Senate dashboard. So if you were in the Senate and you said, "Oh, what does my calendar look like? I'm in the Senate." That's where you could link there. Okay. And it would be like, "Oh, here's what you need to know in the Senate." You know, and and so there would be another link to the list of senators. But I'm going to show you another way to figure that out. So okay, so we go to the legislation dashboard. And from here, you can do a bill search. So you can do an advanced bill search, which I'll show you in a minute. A quick bill search. So if you just want to know something quickly. Uh, a bill text search. So if you said, you know, I heard on the radio that there was going to be a bill about medical marijuana this session. That's where you can do a text search. You can find the LSRs there. Those are the legislative services requests. And you can see that even though the whole site hasn't turned into the legislative session that starts in 2018. The 2018 LSRs are those that are there because they're already working on them. Wow. The voting records, I think that's, you can look at uh, specific bills and how they were voted. Uh, By whom? To how each? Uh, if there was a voice vote, you can, uh, I don't think, no. If you go to the legislature, you can find that out. Yeah. Okay. So. Let us go to the link, the advanced bill search. This is a big screen, so lots of things to look at. This uh, right now is defaulting to 2017 because we have not yet started the 2018 session. That will start in January. Um, you can search by title, which searches for keywords in the title. So you don't have to know an act. You know, it's not like title search word. It's just so if you knew there was something about. Uh, medical marijuana, or you know, there was something about current use, or you know, you know, you could look for those words. <coughs> you can search for uh, bill number, and I love that in this uh, in this search, they give you an example of how to type the bill number so that you don't mess it up. Um, you can also search for bills by where they are in the process. So imagine that you were on a House committee and you said, oh, I need to see the bills that are going to be before my committee. You can do that here. Pending. Well, how would, uh, would it just, like, how do you know what uh, state to ask for, what, what status to ask for? Right. So this would be if you were a legislator. 
So okay, well, that's possible. Okay, Sunday. it is. <laughs> so, uh, so you gotta learn this first. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna scroll down. But okay, so sorry, I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> okay, so this, so there are codes for the Senate status. Mm. There are. Um, so is that a drop down if you hit the code? Yes, yes. I think okay. it gives you examples. Right. Okay. So there's a code for a hearing date. So if you're like, what is on? what's going to be heard today if you were a lobbyist for example and you said okay what's happening today at the legislature where I go every day because I'm a paid lobbyist you could see which hearings were happening uh, you could see all bills with a fiscal note that's where I said the FN bills that's you know the ones affecting money um, and all bills with appropriations like how are we spending our money you could see that uh, and this one is the chapter number, so that's the session law number. If you knew a bill had passed and you wanted to see, you know, the law number three from 2017, you could do that there. You can also search by sponsor. So if there were a person who were your friend in the legislature, you could say, oh, what is, you know, Representative Smith sponsoring this year? Also, if there were a person with whom you significantly disagreed regularly, you could say, oh dear, what's Senator Jones up to this, you know, this uh, session? Um, and you can see, you know, what what committees, you know, you, so this is, you can search by House Committee. So you could say, okay, I'm on the House Human Serv House and Human Services Committee. What's going to be before me as a committee member? So you can search by any of those fields. And does anybody remember what our bill was, the hair braiding bill? 84. 82. Good so guess, but no. Okay. <laughs> Don't just be a jerk. Came a lot closer than I did. <laughs> okay. So are people still feeling happy, by the way? Do you need to take a break or anything? It's fine. Okay. Okay, so the search, so Is I looked. Is be a test? Yes. <laughs> so I looked at a very, very difficult grader. You have the notes, Elaine. Okay. No, uh, she doesn't. I took the notes. Oh, there it is. Okay, so, <laughs> all right. so these are the, so I typed in HB82 on the last screen, and I hit enter, and these are the search results, and you can see, ooh, look, red stars, because that, it, it was, in fact, enacted. So now, oh, people who are non licensed Red star means enacted. Yes, and you can see it says chapter law 0094. Yeah. So the 94th law that our governor signed of the, of the 2000, 17 legislative session was about hair braiding. Jeez. So now okay. we could all become hair braiders without a license. <laughs> so, so, but you can see here too uh, that so it, it, the Senate sent it passed with an amendment in the Senate. Do you see that in green? Yeah. This is where if you can't see it, come closer. And the House concurred with the Senate amendment. And then it was signed by the governor. So that's definitely... Can we see what the amendment was? We, we have to go to another screen. No, nope. yep. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you that screen next. So, okay, so let's go to the... So down the side here is the bill docket, the bill status, and the bill text. And then the audio files. So what are the audio files? The audio files, the yes, oh. are, are audio recordings of the hearings. Wow. If you really have a moose <laughs> license plate in New Hampshire, yeah. yes. uh, you know that, that you bought a moose license plate because it's for conservation. Mm -hmm. That pays for that. Conservation of that information. <laughs> you think I'm kidding, and I'm not. <laughs> Say that again. I didn't catch that. I didn't catch that. You bought a moose license plate. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It, it's about conservation. Right. A I certain amount that. of that money, no. A certain amount of that money was earmarked for the New Hampshire State Archives to save and digitize information related to the passage of law, including making audio files of House and Senate hearings. Oh, wow. Now I, know what you're I, thought it was, oh, yeah. I thought the moose plate was for, well, it was um, for environmental groups. Funny, isn't it? It is. They just took the word conservation um, and applied it in a new way. Is there some way to we, research we, what we don't the know how much was the plate um, budget looks like or <laughs> the allocation? Hey, you said, you said there was a way to oh, help. I, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. I mean, yes, That's is the answer. <laughs> What's the agency? But, but you know, the truth is that it's not a ripoff. It, yeah. As a librarian, I am delighted um, that money is going to digitize this information. Yeah. yeah. New Hampshire 
you know, this, this information is available. And, and honestly, uh, I was talking to one of my colleagues today, and she said, oh, that'll be fun, because ordinarily, the way I give this presentation is sort of backwards. So it's like, okay, you have a New Hampshire RSA. You need to know where it began. So usually I teach legislative history, which is sort of the exact opposite of this. This is legislative enactment, that's legislative history. But it's lovely, really, that this information is being digitized. So please don't get rid of your No, display. I mean, I think it's good and everything, but it, there's a certain dishonesty at the heart of it. Well, there's an assumption about what, what conservation, conservation yeah. means. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially with the moves. Okay, so if we go... Uh, you know, just I'm glad that that's like been the most controversial. Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so, let's, so I have now clicked the link to look at the docket of House Bill 82. Um, what do I say? Uh, notice that the two different branches of the House and the Senate are different colors. Oh, yeah. So you can really easily see which is what. Um, you were saying, can we see what the, amendment the amendments are? are? And yes is the answer, because anytime there's a link, so the bill was introduced, mm -hmm. if you, that's a link, so if you click to the link, you will see the bill as it was introduced. This is good, this is the moose plate again. You can see the bill as it was introduced, okay? Then, in the beginning of February, it had a public hearing in the legislative office building. Uh, it went into executive session. I don't, I don't know why. Okay, but then the committee report came out. Ought to pass. Vote 20 to zero. Wow. 20 to zero. So they all said, oh, that's a good idea. We should pass. Okay. So then it was introduced in the Senate and sent to Executive Department's administration. These little links are two uh, pages in the Senate journal. This is uh, the House <laughs> journal. That's the Senate journal. Uh, then they had a hearing on April 5th. That committee report came out that it ought to pass with an amendment. And that was a unanimous vote as well, right? Doesn't say. No, okay. it doesn't say. Or I can't see it. No, I don't see it. Okay, so <coughs> then uh, it goes, oh, there's a committee amendment. So is, yeah. that, is that a hyperlink where it's yes. a Yes, yeah. all these blues. Are blue, so right. So any so the hearing that's where you can listen. Mm -hmm. uh, -huh. uh The report is to it, you'll go to the page in the House Journal where that report comes out. And usually in the House Journal, when there's a report, the chair of the committee says, "We heard several people talk about why this would be a good idea, and uh, we also spoke to several barbers who don't have a problem with it. We say it ought to pass." I just made that up. I don't know what they said, yeah. but you know. Okay, so then uh, the Senate says it ought to pass with an amendment. So that means it has to get back, sent back to the House where the House is going to concur with the amendment, which they did. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it was enrolled. That means, okay, Governor, over to you. And then uh, it was enrolled, and then it was signed by the Governor. Mm -hmm. And now it was effective uh, <coughs> August 7th. So and had if a we clicked on the ought to pass with amendment hyperlink, we'd see You'd what go that, to that amendment. amendment. Yep. That's right. So the docket, uh, when something has been passed, um, when something has been passed, the docket sort of tells you what happened. Um, if you are tracking legislation, you want to go to the bill status screen. So if we go back to this one, so we just looked at the bill docket, now we're going to look at the bill status. That's what that looks like. All right, so this is a bill that has made it through into uh, being a session law, which it says right there. No, it says this bill has streaming audio. Anyways, but so uh, it has a chapter number. That's how you know it was passed. Okay. And so if when it was introduced, imagine this green Senate is in there. They, you would be able to see. Okay, it has. It was introduced, and now it has a committee uh, hearing. They'll, it would say. There will be a committee hearing in the legislative office building on this date at this time. <coughs> that's when you get to go to Concord. The other thing that's very cool is that all these links, executive departments and administration, these are also links to everybody who's on that committee. So you could contact any of these people. You could figure out who the chair is. You can, these are also links to all of those people. So you can just say, okay, I want to speak to Peter Hansen, link. 
What's his phone number? What's his address? How will I get in touch with him? You might speak to Michael Brewster again. You know, and, and they you can mail links. To yes, their addresses? they have email links. They have mail links. They have phone numbers. Okay. So, which party people are in? You can see this is also. You know, we were talking about um, if you were on one of these committees, you could look and see. Well, you could see it anyways. But what bills are coming before the committee? So. Um, and then you can listen to their hearings. To your moose plate. Okay. So let's imagine that. Jump to slide 21. Uh oh. Let's imagine that you wanted to go to this hearing. Okay. This is a Senate hearing. These are the sponsors of the bill. This is the Senate hearing. It's going to be. On April 5th at 9.30 in the Legislative Office room building, that's LOB, room 101. Okay, so you're going to go to the committee hearing. Okay, if, can I ask a question that you may yeah. not know the answer to? Yeah. Uh, which is, does the place change often? Because I know that happened when Jack went. We were there early, we were set to go to whatever room, and all of a sudden they said, oh, it's we just place. heard it's been changed, uh, and we couldn't figure yeah, out like yeah, was that yeah. something someone? Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it changes because of the number of people. People that show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Um, but then you'd think they'd be redirecting people, right? Yes, I would think so as well. But Do I don't redirect it. We had a senator that we were with, so that we they helped. Yeah, they helped redirect us. He had the inside scoop that this was happening. Mm -hmm. The committees also all have offices in the legislative office building, so um, you could go and say, uh, they're not in room 101, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so, mm -hmm. um, so the legislative office building is a bill is a building in Concord uh, adjacent to the State House where the gritty work of legislating gets done. So uh, this is where you're going to go if you're going to testify on behalf of the bill. Okay, if you go to the legislative office building, that's a picture of it. Uh, the first thing to know is that parking in downtown Concord during the legislative session can be a drag. Um, and as Jillian has just pointed out, sometimes the room can change. You want to give yourself, honestly, plenty of time to get there. Because um, you really do have to find a place to park and you don't want to come screaming in at the last minute. Uh, when you get to the hearing room, uh, there will be a clerk there who will ask you to fill out a card. Uh, and with your name and your phone number and your where you live. and uh, uh, in which direction you're testifying on the bill. Um, the chair uh, will use your card to call your name when it's your time to testify. The chair can pick the cards in any order she wishes. So uh, they can hear all the pro vote ones, all the con ones. Um, but you have to get your turn to speak no matter what? Uh, I think the chair, if there were like four people against and like 180 people pro, I think the chair could say, you know what, I get it. You know, like there's a hung, we know that there are 180 people here, you know, they're four against, they're 184. Um, and so my next bit uh, is true too. If you prepare remarks in writing, make copies of them for everyone on the committee. Um, so that when you come to speak, you, so imagine that you're a committee. First of all, you'd be sitting around like a, square table, and I would sit at this chair to testify with a microphone. Um, I might say, I've prepared remarks, I'm handing them out to you. So that if they say, oh, we don't really need to hear the rest of you, they will still collect your remarks, and your remarks become part of the record for the bill. Um, you, oh, and I was, my, my, my notes say, you can look at the committee roster before to figure out how many copies you need. Um, these will become part of the record. They will be sent to the state archives. They will hopefully be digitized as well. Uh, when, what? Moose plate. plate. <laughs> when you're called to testify, uh, you know, obviously sit down, state your name, say where you live, and the <coughs> first thing you should say is, I have come to urge you to vote that this bill ought to pass. I come to urge you uh, to vote that this bill be inexpedient to legislate. Right, Jack? 
Jack has successfully done this. <laughs> um, so, so that you immediately state those words right out, right out of the shoot. Uh, many hearings are now recorded, who's uh, So speak well and into the microphone. Uh, if your bill makes it out of committee uh, and, and then passes, you get to come up again when it goes to the next place, right? So probably at least two trips. And then, you know, if you really wanted to get wild, you could come up when the governor might be signing it and hold signs. I mean, you can't really speak to the governor, but I know people hold signs in the in the front yard of the state house. So that's that. Uh, what's coming in 2018? So I went and looked at the LSRs that have been filed. You can now check and look through the titles, and many of them have bills now written because the legislature is going to crank up starting in January. Um, this is the screen to search the LSRs. And you can, <laughs> they're not detailed, but you can search by your favorite sponsor. So if you think, oh, what has my beloved representative sponsored this semester? This semester, I keep saying that. This session, uh, you can uh, look for your favorite sponsor. Uh, or you could just click uh, under the year and see all of the LSRs filed. There's usually over 500 of them. Uh, I looked through them and uh, found, as we discussed, that uh, we're trying again with uh, prohibiting discrimination based on gender identity. Last year, made it through the Senate. There was, I went to the House hearing, uh, and there were, who did you go to the House hearing? There were probably about 300 people there speaking for and against. Um, it was a pretty raucous hearing. The chair had to quiet people down several times. Um, and then, in the end, uh, he tabled it, which was very disappointing to people who uh, were hoping it would pass. You can see that it has lots of sponsors. Lots of those people are actually senators. Uh, so hopefully it's going to make it through this time. I also found, so LSRs, when you look through them, you think, what are these people thinking? Maybe, if you're me. Uh, sometimes they're kind of funny, but so here's one uh, relative to domicile for students for voting purposes. I am willing to bet cash that I know what that one's going to say. Like what? Yeah. It's going to say, you can't register as a student and vote. You know, it's going to, that's to thwart uh, UNH voting. Um, I have no idea what this one says, but it's the same guy. Uh, relative to tattoos for state law enforcement officials. Ooh. <laughs> should have them, shouldn't have them. Do, why do we even care? No gang yeah. So this is what you have a 400 office. person citizen legislature. That's the kind of, sometimes the kind of strange thing. The LSRs, you can't get more detail. No, but this but this LSR has been made into a house bill already. So oh, uh, no. you could like, I didn't look at it, but you could like to it. Oh. Uh, and then this one, this is another, is there any screening? No. Uh, <laughs> relative to carrying a pistol or revolver in the university system and community colleges, which I know oh, wow. is is against the, not against the law, but you can't carry a uh, weapon in any of the UNH campuses, and I'm willing to bet again that this one says you can. Yeah. yeah. So this wow. person, the sponsor, Brian Stone. Yeah. He's a very so we can uh, find out where he's from. By we can find out where he lives. Yeah. You can. You can. You can. <laughs> you can do all of those things. Um, but Could you can see, coffee. like in this one, uh, the students, like he's he's got a big problem with my employer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, you know I, my guess is he doesn't really want you and your students to vote, and yeah. he doesn't. We want somebody to be able to carry weapons. And yeah. oh, another thing to consider, and I'm not. I think, please know that you're right, I'm a leftist, but the other thing to consider is that Brian Stone stands alone with those two. That is a much well, harder road to hoe. I mean, yeah. this one, there's like, you know, 20 people. Oh, he's on that one too. Is he really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Brian. He's a, he's a libertarian. He's a libertarian, so he doesn't think there should be any discrimination. He's got another one he's sponsored all alone about relative to animals in motor vehicles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can put the dog in the back of the truck. Relative to the setting of a cash bail. Oh, yeah. You he should just be able to. Relative to the age at which persons may marry. 
Oh, oh yeah, you can marry young. Right uh, now. But see, but see, then whoever just said he likes to ring laws, he doesn't. These are LSRs. These have gone to legislative services. He likes to sponsor. Them. So he likes oh, to sponsor. Them. So, okay. but so legislative services has to write the has right. to write the belts. He just sort of comes up with ideas. Isn't there a limit to the number of? Bills that so. they can write. Time frame. I don't think so. Kathy, yeah. isn't it? Uh, I've heard that a legislator must, if a if a constituent makes a request, a legislator must, must? propose a bill. I I don't know that that's so. Okay. I don't know that that is. I, I I okay. I think that could explain a lot of bills. Yeah, right. That's true. But that's I, true. It's interesting to know. Jeb Bradley. Jeb Bradley is a senator from what position? Is he? Is he he's, he's a senator. speaker of the House. He's Senate. a senator. Is he the speaker? Oh, he's not the speaker of the House, right? Oh, he's, I thought he was the speaker of the Senate. He he's the president of the president Senate. President of the Senate. Okay, Sorry. yeah. So the president, the Senate has a president of the House. Oh, here. Um, so the gender identity bill that can be so they had to. File a completely new LSR. That is a completely new LSR. Yes. That's yeah. a new bill because that's a. So the first. So there's two years of a legislative session, session and the first year uh, the numbers are 100 through 1,000, and then the second session they're 1,100 through whatever. So you can tell which session you're in and when, when they were written by their number that way. So, so one to one thousand? I think so. I think it's one to one thousand. Might be one to one hundred. So, so I would think as you're doing your due diligence and deciding if you support a bill or would want amendments or things like that, if it had to go through a whole new LSR. Nope, amendments don't go through LSRs. Okay, but do we? If it if they had to do a whole new LSR. And if we're trying to determine if we would want it to have an amendment, would we also be wanting to check what last year's LSR said versus this year's? Right. Well, they last year, whole right. one, last year you have the bill. The substance of it? You have the bill from last year. So, okay, so, so you have the bill. Right. So could they have changed the substance is, I guess, my question. I guess, yeah. So you'd probably want I think that's it. true. I think that... I mean, you would... I think that... Because they probably have, because they're, they're, they're hoping, so they might have changed it a little bit. Right. They might have allowed... Conservation to go to electronics. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a fishing game. But, you know, I, I mean, that's, I guess that's one of the so. things because you're trying to figure out what you're supporting. Like, you do have to like look at these pieces and really read them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You really should never make a decision based upon a title. <laughs> because, and truly, if you look through the list of LSRs, I mean, some of them are crazy vague, you know. Relative to flying the United States flag, relative to, to the gold standard for U.S. currency. I mean, there's like some some interesting things that are just ITL pretty much from the get-go. But um, so it's fun. They're fun people. <laughs> so that's all I got. So uh, it's much faster than I expected it because I think I talk fast. Um, New Hampshire is a small state with a volunteer legislature. There are lots of opportunities to get involved in the process. Um, you know, we can talk about letter writing and all that too if you want. But you said that the legislative uh, services group is non-political. In other words, they're not right. They're not, not elected, elected, and they're not party. But is it political? When the governor's party changes, does that staff change? No. No, that's a civil service position. So you said that every legislator has an office in the LOB? No. Oh. No. Committee every committee does. Yeah. yeah. Every committee yeah. has an office. Yes. Yeah. There is no building in Concord big enough for <laughs> 500 <laughs> offices. And, and, you know, when I said it's a non professional legislature, that's another difference. I mean, you know, if we went to uh, New York, uh, those legislators, they have an office mm -hmm. and they have a staff, you know, or if you go to Congress, they have offices and staffs. You know. That's a kind of a bitter thing. If you talk to one of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hiding in the bathroom or yeah, no, in, the or in the hall. Tristan, did you have another question? Uh, yeah, so you mentioned how 
for the bills mark uh, at the end, yep. they get basically some sort of score. A financial note, yep. Uh, so who, who writes the financial note? I'm so glad you asked. I'm pretty sure it's the research department of the House and Senate, which is another non-elected office. Um, people with uh, degrees in public administration and stuff, they, they do a lot of interesting work. I'd love to do that work. Um, I think that's who does it. Helen. Yeah, I'm trying to um, understand the the session laws versus okay. the statute. Okay. Is it because the session laws include just what passed during the year, but then they have to get included into that more permanent body of laws or statutes? No. no. It's it's. Uh, the session laws include things that are never going to be statutes. They're not going to be revised statutes. So there might be, you know, when you drive to uh, <coughs> Manchester and you drive over at exit 11, there's something called the Merrill's Marauders Bridge. Yeah. That, there was a session law, 1986, session law 38, naming a bridge of the Everett Turnpike in Merrimack after the Merrill's Marauders. That's not going to be in the, the RSAs. But that is, in fact, a past law. But for example, the hair braiding. Yep. So that particular aspect of hair yep. care was not going to require licensing. But then right. that would have to get incorporated into the larger right. legislative package right. that the, those licenses. Right. So we right. So there is a title of. So imagine a dictionary versus an encyclopedia, mm -hmm. which is kind of a tricky metaphor, but it's a dictionary versus an encyclopedia. A dictionary is just all the words in a yeah. language in alphabetical order. That's like the session laws. Bang, 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 yeah. bang, bang, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. An encyclopedia takes ideas like about leopards and does an entry about leopards. There are lots of words from the dictionary that end up in the leopards article, in and someone has encapsulated that into an article. So the session laws, dictionary, 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 the RSAs are put together by topic. Mm -hmm. Like they're codified, they're made into a code versus just random laws. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Yeah. So the decimal system, that's what I think. So the way books are put into CAC, they assign numbers. Of okay. <laughs> I, so I don't, I think so, but if you think but so. But okay. there's a system of hierarchy. There's a system, right, right. And those codes are, um, you call them codes, right. but for example, all of the, the codes around how you are authorized to use a boat in New Ham on New Hampshire lakes, is that a set of codes, regulations, what, that's different? Two things there, Two yeah, so things. if we go back to the top, boats on the lakes, uh, there's an element of safety, right? Department of Safety. So imagine, uh, I like to think about like the Clean Air Act. Okay, let's not think about both. Let's think about the Clean Air Act. So the <coughs> legislature says, we ought to have clean air here in New Hampshire. And that's, you know, the elected body, they say, yes, we're going to pass this bill, the Clean Air Act. It's an act, and the governor says, yes, this is a good idea. Part of the Clean Air Act includes an enabling uh, an administrative enabling clause that says we, citizen legislature, don't know anything about carbon monoxide and particulate matter and whatever. So we're going to take the details of that and we're going to hand it over to an administrative agency. So the governor, the executive, appoints someone to be in the Office of Environmental Services and the Office of Environmental Services hires attorneys and scientists and attorney scientists and they make up the regulations about how many liters per whatever of carbon monoxide can be in the air. So the legislature says yes, clean air. And then the executive agency says okay here are the details. Mm -hmm. So with the boats, the legislature, the RSA says there's going to be laws about boats. Boats are going to have to have certain, they're going to have to pass some kind of inspection, they're going to have to be registered with the Department of Safety. Yeah. They have now clued you into which agency is going to make the regulations about boating safety. 
And however, the however, laws. Now, yes, so they, they are. are. See, that's because bad it, it relates to that. Right, because umbrella. because if you are out on Lake Winnipesaukee at night without a light on your boat, mm -hmm. you're going to get a ticket because mm -hmm. you have broken the law. law okay, although it's probably it. a regulation. So all of these eight, all of these branches can mm -hmm. enact laws. Okay. The other thing that's true about boats is that uh, in New Hampshire, if you are driving your boat drunk. That falls under the uh, operating under the influence, right? So that again, that's a statute. If you uh, bring your boat from a lake in Vermont to a lake in New Hampshire without rinsing the milfoil off it, that's an environmental regulation, right? So there's, there are, yes, <laughs> that's the right answer. So there are lots of different, so all three branches of government enact laws that affect us. When I went to library school, um, I had a class in government documents, so like documents published by the federal government. And the first homework assignment was to take one day of your life and to make a note of everything you did that was uh, affected by the federal government. And so you wake up mm -hmm, to a clock radio and there's a radio station that's governed by the FCC. And you're lying on a mattress that has a tag from the Consumer Product Safety Act. And then you get up and you take a shower with a hot water heater that has an Energy Star rating on it. And then you come out to the lit kitchen and you make coffee that was governed by the import-export regulations. And then you get milk from your coffee and that's governed by the FDA. And then, and so you, <laughs> it only takes till about 11 o'clock on that day for you to say, holy cats, every single thing I do is regulated by the government. So. Well, we gotta get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big government over. Yeah. yeah. I know about oh. pharmacies and yep. how to find them in a library or online. Good. But how do you find regulations? I'm so glad you asked. We can't see. Yeah. Hi. Good to see you. Okay, so if you go, and I, these are not live links, but if you go, there's a link here to laws and rules. In New Hampshire, we call our uh, regulations, we call them administrative rules. Uh, so if you link to laws and rules, you will see that uh, administrative rules go through, not surprisingly, the Office of Legislative Services. And so, but you can see links to the different agencies and the regulations they promulgate. By the way, that whole like day in the life of regulation, that was all federal regulation. This is state regulation. So like there's even, you know, there's layers, layers, layers. So how big is legislative services? It must be a big state. It was in that big building, right? Yeah. <laughs> they all me. So hundreds of people? I don't think so. No, we're a very lean state. Oh. It's <laughs> it's uh you know, they, they they're people hard. who really know what they're doing. Yes they do. In the, your clean air example, yeah. could the office of the governor, absent direction from the legislature, have just decided that there should be and go clean up, start cleaning up the air? No, the governor could, like uh, the president can, so I think the governor can, um, make a executive order, but people freak out. What? That's not the way you enact legislation, you know, executive okay. order. Um, no, <laughs> it's pretty much the answer. Well, and certainly the agencies. Agencies can't act without legislative authority. Okay. So the governor could say, oh, I think we should have clean air, but, you know, they couldn't do very much without the agencies. And the agencies, so if we talk about, like, the checks and balances of the three branches, the agencies, the heads of the agencies are appointed by the executive. So the enabling legislation comes from the legislative and then goes to the executive agency where the head has been appointed by the governor. So you might have, this happens in Congress all the time, where you know you have a one party controls Congress and says, we need banking regulations. And the president in a different party says, okay, I'll make the chair of the banking commission. This guy who worked for Goldman Sachs, he'll enable, you know, he'll set your regulations for you. So, uh, you know, so there's a tension there. And, and at the federal government, and in the New Hampshire, in the New Hampshire government, you can also, uh, there are hearings about regulations, too, and we could talk about how to do that, too. But, so if you were particularly interested in environmental regulation or in some other kind of regulation, uh, there's, that's all public, too. I mean, this is supposed to be all completely transparent so that people can be involved at every level. And that's true in the federal government. You can 
write comments to proposed regulations if you agree or disagree with them. So you can't vote executive agencies out of office, but you can, uh, you know, vote the executive out of office, and then theoretically he or she appoints a different. And who agency. appoints the committee that writes the regulations after a? Did you say that was the governor? Who appoints the committee? No. So the governor appoints the. Um, the head of the agency, so the head of the Department of Safety, the head of the Health and Human Services Committee, the head of those people are government appointees. But the people who work at administrative agencies are are employees or civil servants. So they take direction from the legislation and then from the executive of the head of the committee of the agency. So you might, you know, we might work at environmental services and you know Tar is us is appointed as the head, and Tar is us says, okay, we're going to loosen up these regulations, and we might disagree, but we are not, we're not political appointees. We just do what we're told. Essentially, mm. um, in Massachusetts, I was very shocked about what makeup of the committee that wrote the regulations for the Wetlands Protection Act was. That's Massachusetts. Massachusetts is different in yeah. terms of political appointees. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a different place. It was pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> what would have to happen in order to get the uh, um, legislator less than 400 for some reasonable level? You need a constitutional amendment. <laughs> Of in, in the state of the New Hampshire Constitution. Has that ever been changed? Uh, until 1972, there were constitutional conventions uh, pretty regularly, and people looked at them. So, yes, <laughs> you could, you could do it. Right, I'll get right on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. so, I mean, I guess the other question would be. Um, just your opinion, whether you think it's effective as opposed to having a uh, legislative... The mob? Do I think the mob is effective? <laughs> well, they are the mob is effective, um, as a matter of fact. You know, I'm probably not a good... Good, uh, do I think it's effective? No, of course I don't. They get paid nothing. They're all volunteers. They're all retirees or people who are independently wealthy or college kids who want like a state license plate. No, I don't think it's effective. I feel as though uh, the uh, Senate. See, now we're on film saying this. Hey, <laughs> thanks, Elaine. Uh, so, oh, dear. so cut it out. Um, turn it off. <laughs> you no, say I don't. I don't. I mean, but but the other side of that is they are effective because because they're not cronies. You know what I mean? They're really they're 400 individual people elected by neighborhood by neighborhood. It's the fourth largest the legislature other, in the world, in the world, isn't it? Right, next to like Poland or something. The other thing that's true about New Hampshire, and what I did not talk about, is the uh, um, the Executive Council. Oh my God, I've been dying to ask. What the heck is the Executive okay, Council? Okay, so the Executive Council, there's a five-member council, also elected, and they advise the governor. So they're sort of there to kind of make sure the governor doesn't get too nuts, right? Um, so if the state is going to let a contract, and I should know the amount of money and I don't. But if the state is going to let a contract for a certain amount of money or over, the governor can't say yes without the executive council saying yes. You know, they're sort of like the privy council. They keep <laughs> the governor, they keep watching the governor to make sure. So if, if the governor, for example, I'm a notary public and my notary public application had to be approved by the executive council. So the governor can't just rubber stamp me. They all have to say, okay, yep, and rubber stamp me. So by statute or by constitution, constitution, the executive council has some parameters. Yes, yes. It's money. It's mostly money. It's, it's mostly money. money. It's mostly money, right. It's mostly money and like patronage. You know, it's to keep the governor okay. from picking his or her, you know, five favorite people to do every job. It's interesting because the other two branches do not have a distributed uh, a watchdog. So the governor, the yes. governor gets a watchdog. Yes. yes, we. I guess we are. Our constitution is very fearful of uh, One. power and One. Like, consolidated <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, we have like this huge legislature or whatever. But uh, so, 2020, there's going to be a census, which is going. Oh yeah, that's a federal thing. For redrawing of uh, districts. Right. Um, how does that play out for the executive? Council, because that—that's a great question that I don't know the answer to. But, but I—I I mean, I could certainly look it up. So, so the census, the 
uh, decennial census, that's in the United States Constitution. And at some point, that was handed over to the states to figure out how they were going to do it. That's these are all mysterious processes, and I don't want to say the wrong thing. But um, I don't know. You mean the joint of the district? The district. The district. Yeah. So yeah, so they're they're right. right. So we have two legislative districts, right? Right. So, this is so which towns are in the which? The jury yep. Isn't yeah. it done electronically in some states? I beats the heck out well, of me. I mean, there's a whole, using there are whole companies, there are companies how that to do help you do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's still in groups doing it. Right. It's hmm. not the party in power, but it's a bipartisan group. It's pretty rare, but yeah, there are a couple true. states. I think a couple of states, states do that. Right, states right. have that. And then there are states that are really the opposite. Of yeah, yeah. But, but and in the balance of power kind of way, they, uh, you know, people bring that to the Supreme Court. And both parties do it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. gerrymandering, that whole, that term came about uh, in Massachusetts yeah. because yeah. they drew some crazy district and uh, if, if you look this up in the dictionary, the, it looked like a salamander on the map. And the guy, I'm not kidding, the guy who came up with it was named Jerry, and so it was called Jerry Mandarin. Ah, I didn't know that. Yep. Oh, Mandarin. Yeah. I wasn't spelling it out then. What's, yeah, no. What, say it again. It's Jerry Mandarin. So it's G E R R Y M A N D E R I. -N -G. No, we're really lucky in the state that we can just go up to the state. Now. Yes, we are. That's why. That's my last slide. It says and a by small the way, state. If you, if you want, you want to talk to the to the to Sanudo. Yep. Make right. an appointment. To his face. He goes in the back door. <laughs> Yeah, talked about well because that's where the parking spot is. Yeah, so there was some, so there was I was there for and something, and uh, first of all, there's the last I was there's no metal detector. There's no, I mean, it's not a police day in New Hampshire. And so, but when you go out the back door, my favorite, I was going one day, and there were like these handmade oh signs God. on the back door that said "Acorns falling" because like people were leaving and like getting bonked out the head. With the acorns. And I thought that's the nice thing about New Hampshire. You know what I mean? <laughs> sort of like the Probably take up homemade the acorns. I know, you know? Yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. So. All right, are there any other questions? Thanks. I that really, was really good, Kat. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, actually, wow. I'm I exhausted. have one other question. Oh, yeah. Because I know you said the legislative session is that two years. Yes. They have. Yes, because that means they're elected every calendar. two years. Is this is a yearly calendar yes. in terms of when when bills get um, yes. voted on. Yes. Yes, and it's January. It's usually January to uh, June thirtieth because that's the end of the state fiscal year. Okay. So and and then sometimes if things get crazy, there might be a recall session in the fall. So. Um, sometimes there's a fall session of the legislature, but that's what they, most of the business then concludes on June 30th. Most of the business concludes on June 30th. Particularly in a budget year, because you need yeah. to have a new budget in place by July 1st. When you're only paying these people 50 bucks a year, you don't want yeah. more Yeah, 200 dollars a year. Really? really? Yeah. Whatever. And you only get mileage. If you're and more than like 100 miles away or right. something, right? Yeah. So if you're like in the southern part of the state, you can't even milk the state for miles. There's not a lot of milk in the state. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> See, we keep saying things. Hello, state. I don't know where this film is going.